Hello everyone, I am Ankit Sharma, a member of COPS IIT BHU and today I will be discussing uh, some basic problems of DP like knapsack and subset sum problem. So let's get into it. So what exactly is a knapsack? So you can think of a knapsack as a backpack which can only store up to W units of weight. You have a few items each have their own value and their weight you have to choose a few of them so that you uh, can carry them in the nap in the knapsack but also have the value maximum possible so uh, there are three variations of this problem the first one is fractional knapsack in this we can break one item into um, a part so that makes this problem very easy we can solve it greedily and since we are discussing DP so I won't be discussing it here you can check uh, GFG for the approach the second one is a 0 1 knapsack 0 1 knapsack uh, is kind of a border case of fractional knapsack since fractions include from 0 to 1 so it just considers the boundary either you can keep the object or you cannot keep the object so we cannot break items into pieces and uh, so so that means we can either choose an item or ignore it unbounded knapsack unbounded knapsack is a variation of zero one knapsack in this we have infinite copies of each type of item so repetition in selection of items is allowed so let's start with zero one knapsack initially when you are new to DP uh, you must first think of a recursive relation recursive relations are easy to find as uh, you just have to implement what the problem says since the problem says that uh, we have to maximize uh, the va uh, value of knapsack we can either choose an object or not choose an object so uh, that's what we will do so let's uh, check the code so this is the recursion solution so in this n is the number of items w is the uh, um, capacity of the knapsack v stores the uh, values of each item and w stores the uh, weight of each item so we call a recursive function and uh, in this v is the complete vector of values w is the vector of weights uh, so w is the capacity of the knapsack which is still empty which can still be filled basically and i is the current index of the traversal say for example this this is weight wala vector and this is a uh, value wala vector so if we want we can either keep this weight or we can skip this weight if we keep this weight we have to add this value to our answer and if we skip this weight we just have to move one index forward so that's what we did here uh, if we uh, if we want the answer without this current uh, item so what we will do is we will just check the answer of i plus one i plus one th element and now we want to check uh, the answer if we consider this element so if we consider this element uh, we will have to add this value to our answer and uh, now our capacity will be decreased by wi and we have to traverse further as well and uh, we have to uh, take the maximum of both the cases without the element and with the element and take the maximum of those and uh, return it this operation is only possible if w is greater than or equal to wi so if w is less than wi we have to return the answer without the current index because including current index is not possible so that's what we did here so in the end we will get a 2 to the power n complexity solution which is not the most optimized solution we currently have so we can improve it by memorizing a few of the results or memogizing a few of the results so let's uh, discuss the code for that in this we did nothing we just uh, created a 2d vector or 2d array if you say 
uh, of capacity n plus some constant uh, it can also be one I just keep it 10 for safety or uh, whatever reasons so uh, it is of capacity n cross w we just pass it by reference to the function and what we do is we check if the value is uh, minus 1 we return the value and if it isn't then uh, we return the value after saving it in the DP so uh, same recursive calls won't happen if a recursion if we know the answer for some state if we have ever calculated the answer for some state we will store it and we will use it for further cases so there won't be unnecessary recursive calls so this fastens the solution from a huge 2 to the power n to just n times w which is way better which is of order n square so which is way better than 2 to the power n the, that's something I suggest that uh, if you are new you can just uh, start thinking of a recursive relation and then are trying to uh, store the results for the cases you know the answer of and using the answer in other cases so that would help you solve the problem in the time limits if your solution is optimized enough this is still a recursive DP this is not the uh, iterative DP so let's discuss the iterative form of this DP so now we are thinking of uh, iterative DP so in this uh, DP of ij means the maximum value we can get using the first i elements using total un j units of weight so let's uh, check the code for this since there are two options skipping the current index skipping the current item and picking it so if we want to skip the current item the answer for this weight for the current index is same as the answer for this weight at the previous index no change if we want to pick the current item then the answer for this weight for the current index is same as adding vi that is value for that uh, item with the answer for current weight minus wi weight at the previous step so this is pretty clear since uh, we already discussed this in recursive relation this is exactly what we did there so uh, that's pretty much it for the solution and at the end we just print the uh, dp for n and w, uh, n w. so using uh, first n items uh, what is the maximum value we can make this was it and the solution the complexity for this solution is uh, time complexity is o n cross w that is o n square and the space complexity is same o n square but we can uh, optimize the space complexity time complexity cannot be improved but the space complexity can be improved and we can reduce it by a huge factor so we can reduce this n square to o n that is the uh, O of weight so let's see the initial steps are pretty much the same just the declaration is different uh, because we just want uh, one d array uh, with total length of w greater than w so I kept it w plus 10 for no specific reasons you can keep it uh, w plus 1 anything greater than w plus 1 is good so in this we just iterate from 1 to n on indices like in the previous steps but we iterate from w to 0 in decreasing fashion uh, just because uh, we want to use the values updated by the previous steps and uh, this method allows us to use that and how this helps is uh, say for example we are at some uh, dp of wt state so we are using the value of the values lesser than it so the lesser values will not be uh, the contribution of this step the dp of some lesser value would be the contribution of the previous steps so uh, in this way uh, we can use the values from the previous steps without uh, creating a 2d matrix so th this is quite helpful in in the various dp solutions we can use this uh, so that's pretty much it for knapsack. In zero knapsack. 
let's move forward so both of these we discussed already so then comes the unbounded knapsack so in unbounded knapsack as we already know that uh, there is just a just a freedom of using an element more than once so you can try uh, solving this by your own this is uh, quite intuitive believe me on that uh, you just have to think a recursion which is pretty much similar uh, to the 0 and knapsack which I discussed a few minutes ago you can easily think of that uh, recursion relation and uh, then you can try to memoize it and uh, memoizing is enough to make it to O of n into sum both complexity time complexity and space complexity you, if you still want to think of uh, an iterative solution then you can try converting the recursive relation you just found into an iterative form uh, that's uh, that's an easy process and uh, try to write it in the iterative form and if you uh, still find any difficulty you can uh, google it uh, you will easily understand the code from there from gfg actually the next problem and the last problem of uh, this video is subset sum problem in this problem we are given an array of elements and we have to find if there is a subset whose sum is any given number s so if you think this is exactly same as 0 and knapsack when all the values are made as 1 so you can just uh, change the last code the, co the space optimized code because why not <laughs> so you can ch change that code uh, and uh, try, s try understanding this this is quite uh, intuitive uh, I just set the dp0 equals to 1 because getting a sum of 0 is uh, possible by choosing none of the elements and then the same iterating from s to 0 uh, if the sum minus vi was possible then sum will also be possible so that's it and at the end just print uh, dp of s if it is true then print true if it is false then print false so that's it for this video uh, there I have also listed a few practice problems you can check these out and if you want to uh, try some more problems here are the list of problems from code code chef and uh, GFG and if you want any other questions you can just google it and you will find a bunch of questions related on this topic because these two basically because knapsack is a topic which is the parent problem of a lot of problems so uh, understanding this and uh, trying to implement it by your own is quite helpful believe me knapsack might seem quite intuitive but people tend to forget if they try to memorize the solution try to understand the uh, process of reaching the solution in that way you can always form a recursive relation on your own and try to think of a dp solution because that's how D, uh, dp works so um, uh, thank you for watching make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends because uh, dp is quite quite an important topic you must already know that so share the playlist with your friends and uh, thank you for watching stay home stay safe